is Hebrew Hits, presented by JTribeRadio.com. I'm your host, Malia, and I sit down with people who live by the motto, it's what you do with what you have that makes a difference. Hebrew Hits. This is the 31st episode of Hebrew Hits. And today I'm really excited because I am sitting down with Mickey Klein. She is the CEO of Mickey Klein Interiors. She is based out of Miami Beach, Florida. She specializes in commercial and hospitality design. She also does residential design. And I have the pleasure of sitting down with her today. Before we get to the episode, I just want to kindly ask you if you can please go follow us on Instagram at Hebrew underscore hits if you have not done that already. And follow us on all your favorite streaming apps on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Stitcher Podcasts, on iHeartRadio Podcasts as well. Well, let's get straight to the show. Mickey, welcome to Hebrew Hits. I'm so excited to be sitting down with you today. How are you doing today? Good. Thank you so much for having me. I'm so excited to do this. I'm like, I think this must be my favorite one. I just love the open, you know, dialogue and natural conversation. Yeah, I'm so excited. I'm so excited that this is your favorite one because it's my show is all about, you know, being open, just having a conversation, letting people really know who you are and get to just someone told me that they love my show because it's relatable. I speak to people who they could, you know, they could relate to. So I'm so excited to have you on the show. So Mickey, tell us a little bit about yourself. Where do you come from? How you grew up? Um, So I come from Detroit, Michigan, actually. That is where I was born and raised. I grew up there. <laughs> that, was, that was really most of my life. Um, I did leave for around six months after I got married. We moved to Toronto and then we moved back to Detroit. So basically Detroit for most of my life until five years ago when we moved down to Miami Beach. Was that different going to Miami? Very different. It's night and day. You just can't compare. One is, you know, simple world, small town, and the other is so like Southern living, warm weather all the time. I didn't have to think about snow or shovels or defrosting my car or coats, boots, gloves, scarves. I didn't, that was just like, now we just make sure there's an umbrella in your car and you go and off okay. snow. But come on, you gotta miss the snow, no? I do not like cold weather. I never did. <laughs> I'm like, when it's, I would say like 65 at night here in the winter, I, I'm like sweatshirt, leggings, Ugg, I, I get freezing. <laughs> Well, then I'm happy you're in Florida. (laughs) Exactly. That's really awesome. So you're an interior designer right now. Have you always wanted to be an interior designer? Um, So no, my answer is no. If anyone has ever watched other interviews or know me really well, they would know that shoes are my number one passion. I, I always wanted to be a shoe designer since I was younger. I was just obsessed with shoes. I used to go and shop for shoes and then hide them in my car so my parents wouldn't find them, like wear them in the house. Oh my um, God. Yeah, it's kind of fun. <laughs> How old were you when you were doing that? Um, once I got my driver's license, like I would like, I don't know, I just love shoes. They were always just my thing, so. What is it about shoes? You like heels, flats, sneakers, like all kinds of shoes? So I'm more of, because I'm so short, I need something with height. So anything with heels, a platform, a wedge, that kind of thing. But also, um, I don't know, it's not just women's shoes. Like the first thing I look at if I see you or meet you is your shoes. So sorry in advance that I'm watching this. I'm totally looking at your shoes. Um, oh it just makes the outfit. It's like the finishing touch of, and it shows your personality and the person's personality. And it's a way to express yourself or... You know, you could tell so much about someone by their shoes. So I know that when I meet you in person, I better have some nice shoes. <laughs> or you could totally judge me by my shoes. How about that? I give you permission. <laughs> okay, because I, I personally love sneakers, but when I meet you, hopefully one day in person. Wear sneakers. Look- totally yeah? wear sneakers, yes. Not, I don't have to wear heels. No, for you. I only wear height because like literally people look down to talk to me. because I'm like, Wow. So how did you become an interior designer if you wanted to be, you know, a shoe designer? Okay. So I, I realized shoe designing is probably not going to get me where I eventually want to be. Um, so I used to do like little events and like backyard parties or like a backyard bat mitzvah. Um, I would help friends with like decor in their house or if they were doing any kind of, you know, renovation, they would be like, well, what do you think about this? And space planning and all that kind of stuff. And then I'm like, 
I should probably do this for a living. I'm good at it. I know what I'm talking about. Um, and before I even went to school, I took an internship. Um, I just wanted to see like what it would actually be like. It was a residential um, design firm. And I remember, you know, the owner said, she pulled me in and she's like, you have so much potential. Like one day you are going to make it, you know, you have it, um, but you have a few things to learn. So I took her advice and here I am. Wow. Nine years later. Yeah. That's awesome. So tell me, what about your upbringing gave you the push to keep going and never give up? Because it's hard to just, you know, start and you're like, I'm going to make this business, but you kept going and you pushed through. It is hard. Um, I would say really it's a personality one. One is you're either a determined person or, or that's not what fuels you when you wake up in the morning. You know, it depends what, you know, makes you go and tick. So for me being, um, I'm going to use the word driven, but really I don't give up ever. And if I give up, I don't even consider it giving up. I'm just like, no, I'm like, <laughs> um, so with my personality, but also the drive that I knew there was like, there was like a world out there. I could do it. Something will, you know, I'll become finally what I always wanted to be or something that I wake up in the morning and I'm excited and, you know, fulfilled doing. So that's really what got me. I guess I'm just relentless. <laughs> <laughs> is it hard those days that you go through and you, you, some days you feel the passion and you feel the fire inside of you, but then there are some days that you're like, oh my gosh, like, ugh, I, I don't, I don't want to give up, but I just feel like I'm not getting anywhere. Do you ever feel that? Yeah. Um, there, there are a lot of days, number one, that I feel that. And also that I feel very discouraged, um, or I doubt myself. Um, but really those are the days, number one, when you have to take a step back, those are like, not the mental health days, but those are the days where you focus on you, what makes you happy outside of whatever it is you're struggling with. Um, time to regroup, time to think of maybe there's a different strategy, maybe I'm doing something wrong, maybe there's a different way to execute the plan, um, all of that kind of stuff, but almost with downtime, because when you're feeling that way, it usually means it's time to just regroup and breathe. Right, because throughout anybody, building anything or anybody's daily life, they could feel some, you know, self-doubt and things like that. Yeah. So it's hard. It is not all, you know, roses and amazing. There have been a lot of weeks and months, um, a lot of tears. Um, it's, it's not an easy road. It's not like painless. It's, it's blood, sweat, and tears. It really is. I'm so excited that you're talking about that because there are so many people, especially young people, even me, some days I have like, I'm talking to so many people and I feel like, oh my gosh, okay, I'm pushing through. I'm really doing something good. And then there are other days and I'm like, what, like, why am I doing this? Or just anybody who feels that way. So if we could see you, who you're already successful, you push through all that. So it's very cool that you could talk about that. But I still, I still have my days. Like, I don't want you to think like, oh, no, I'm on the other side. That's it's, it's not, I'll wake up some days and I'm just like, like, what am I doing? Like, what am I doing? And that's the self-doubt. And it's also, you know, juggling life. It's just, like, this is not all I do all day. Like, I am a mom and a wife and I have a life that I have to juggle on top of a full-time, you know, business. So it's a lot. But at the end of the day, I'm like, this is what I like doing. This is what makes me happy. Um, there are hard days. Even now, there are, oh, like, especially with the kids and school and my deadlines at work and how I juggle it all. But I have, first of all, I have my friends who pump me up, you know, like, it helps a lot. Mm -hmm. um, but also myself, like, so I'll take a few hours out of that day and I'll focus on my kids and work will, you know, come either before they go to school and they don't leave me or after they come home and they're all settled, you know, like, that's it's just all about balance, I guess, or finding the right balance for yourself. That's awesome. awesome. Now, I know that when someone's building a business, there are so many ups and downs and back and forths. So what has been some ups and downs, if you don't mind sharing, that you have encountered while building your business? Um, so in the beginning, it was a little hard because I had a lot of people say, so what experience do you have? 
and this is the question I get from a lot of people as well. Um, you know, I don't have experience. Could you give me advice? Or I, I, I don't know what to do next. How do I, you know, transition into a different field? And basically, it's hard. It takes either you have to prove yourself. You have to prove that even if you don't have the experience that someone might be looking for, that you are capable of doing it, whether that is showing what you're worth by, you know, for me, it's like making renderings or showing them, you know, what my capabilities are like are so that they can see, oh, wait, she does know what she's talking about, even if she doesn't have any, like any specific experience right now with this specific. Mm -hmm. um, so that kind of thing. Or, you know, it's, sometimes it just takes one person to believe in you and be like, listen, I'm going to give you a shot. I'm going to give you a chance. And, you know, from there, it just trickles on. And also word of mouth and, and you know, good reviews and standing by who you are and what your product is and customer service and all of that just, it's like a trickle effect. If you have someone believe in you and you show your, that even if you don't have experience, you can execute the project or the job or whatever field you're in. Um, and then standing behind, if you make a mistake, okay, I made a mistake, let me learn from this. This isn't like, oh my God, now I'm horrible. It's a, uh, okay, noted. <laughs> Next time it does not go this way. You know, this is the better way to do it. Um, it's a lot of getting back up uh, after you fall down and just wiping yourself off and moving forward. It's a learning curve. So for those young girls, young guys, whoever it is, who want to get into the field of interior design, they've been to school, but they haven't gotten that, you know, they didn't do anything tangible yet. They didn't really have any internships. They didn't have any jobs. What do you tell them if, if they don't have anything to show you? How, you say if somebody just believes in you, but I guess, how do you prove yourself if you don't have anything to show, but you know that you're good? So if they went to school, then they have definitely their portfolio from school. So I'd want to see their school projects that they finished. I'd want to hear from teachers. Mm -hmm. I'd want to hear from, you know, other classmates if they were on any kind of project team. Um, you know, that's the kind of research I do if there's no experience. And also based on their portfolio, portfolio just by seeing what they've um, accomplished in school, usually I'll be able to I'll be able to determine if they have the skill that I need while I'm hiring here at my company because a lot of what we do is I'll train them into because we're specific fields mm -hmm. um, you know I'll take their skills from school and I'll you know teach them which direction to take those so now this is a this is a different question that I just came to mind when you're let's say hiring somebody do you look for somebody who has you know the best renderings the best work or do you do you try to hire somebody who has the most passion or you know will have really good work ethic good personality what do you think both it's actually both they don't have to have the best renderings and the best you know it doesn't have to be the best i need to see first of all that they understand that they're quick learners because they can catch on quickly to what you know we do here um it'll be it'll be a lot easier for them to be working for um, but they have to have the basics, you know, it doesn't have to be the best at everything. A lot of it is you learn as you go. Right. So. That's awesome. So now that you've built up your company and your brands, can you just, can you tell me how your company is different from other interior design companies? Okay. So I don't know every other company. I don't know what they do. Um, what's different is we don't take care of purchasing. So some people like that and some people don't like that. Um, it depends on who the client is and what they're looking to achieve, you know? So that really separates us from the rest, that right there, because a lot of companies have purchasing departments. Right. So, you know, they have their own team that takes care of all the purchasing and all of that kind of stuff. So that's a big one. And because we don't do the purchasing, we're able to, um, focus more on the details, you know, mm -hmm. really, really button up all the details, quicker responses, customer service, that kind of stuff. Was that a decision you made when you just opened your business or like, when did you make that decision? Um, so we've never done purchasing. It's not only 
to a lot of clients like that because they see that we're not charging um, a certain percentage on each purchase they're making. Right. Um, it, it helps to have a more transparent project and the process can go a lot quicker. It helps to have a lot of more what I didn't hear you, sorry. A transparent process because they know, you know, what they're actually paying for. Um, and also for our projects to go smoother and faster. Oh, that's, that's really cool. So as a designer, mm -hmm. you need inspiration. Me being a designer myself, I remember I went to school and for three hours in class, I would just sit there and I'd be like, I can't work here. Like I knew the classroom was not for me. When I came home, I was working 10 o'clock at night, 11, 12 o'clock. I was, I was able to work at night. That was where I found my inspiration. Or like I'd wake up in the middle of the night and be like, oh my gosh, that's a design I want to do. And we I all do that. Out. We yeah. all do that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so where do you find your inspiration? Um, so I know it's a little cliche to say everywhere, but it's true. Like I travel a lot for work. So different cities and seeing different architecture and seeing different people, like even if I don't know them, just by people watching, I'm able to get inspiration on how um, different projects flow. Meaning if it's a bar or a restaurant, like I'll watch how people are being seated and how people are being served and all that kind of stuff. Um, you know, it, it really comes from anywhere. If we're driving down the road and I'm like looking at the ocean, you know, I'm like, oh, I like that color scheme. Yeah. <laughs> and really it's just blue and a bunch of different shades. So it's, it really does come from anywhere. It comes from random places where I least expect it. And also when I'm not focusing or looking for inspiration, that's where it will pop. So it's kind of interesting how it like works like that. That's really cool. And do you, do you have like a sketch book just that you carry around that if you want to just sketch something out quickly or now you're not like that? So I'm not like that. I actually, I do pictures. I'm one of those, like, I'll just snap pictures. Like I'll just hold my phone and like click, 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 click. And then I'll cut and paste certain things from the picture and I'll merge it together to be like my ultimate view of what I like the different features I like from each thing that I took. That's what's so good about phones these days. Yes. <laughs> you literally just take a picture, snap it, and you have it. Yeah. yeah. So now you've been, you know, you went through your life and different, different things happen, different things, you know, occur. What has been the best advice that you have been given? To take criticism, not as a bad thing, but to learn from it and grow from it. And even if that person did not mean it in a polite way, that they're trying to express something that, I need to actually hear. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I can't sit here and be like, oh, that person was just miserable. It's like, no, clearly there's something that I'm doing in a way that I thought was beneficial, but really it's not. So let me like take what they're saying into consideration. Um, let me regroup and review and see how I can do things a little differently to cater to each client because each client is different ultimately. Um, so for me, you know, listening to what they're actually saying mm -hmm. instead of what I want it to be or, you know, because I'm my own person. I can't, not what works for me. What works for me doesn't always work for everyone else. So just taking criticism and learning from it and growing from it and staying positive actually helps a lot. Would you say you learned that earlier on in your life or you learned that throughout your career? No, I learned that much earlier on in life and it was hard. Wow. It definitely was applied in my career. Um, but I learned that way, way early on. That's really good because I know people are sensitive and if people criticize them. They feel like, oh my gosh, why are you, why are you criticizing me? But it's so oh. good that you learned that it's a positive thing. You take the criticism and you, you don't get upset from it. You say, okay, let me learn from this. Let me get better. It take, I mean, sometimes it stings. I'm not going to be like, oh, it's amazing. And someone sits <laughs> here and puts me down because that's not what I'm saying. Um, but it also means that I have to do something differently and, you know, how does it apply? Right. right. Okay. Just from getting to know you over this like week, week and a half that I've been talking to you, you're just like such a nice lady. Like I'm really, you know, I'm happy that I'm able to connect with you. And I know that you said you also, you love helping others out, even if they can be your competitors. Why yeah. is it so important for you to help other people out, especially um, if they're your competitors? Okay. So for me, I don't view it as a threat. Um, there's enough business in this world to go around. If they are taking my clients and going after my specific people, that means, number one, that they don't have enough confidence to think outside the box. Mm -hmm. um, number two is that maybe they're not as knowledgeable, that they're not understanding how to apply their skills elsewhere. So 
if they're going to ask me for, you know, hey, where do you get this? Or um, who do you contact at this vendor? Or, you know, that type of thing. Or what do you recommend I do differently? It's, it's my pleasure to help them. Number one, you know, a lot of people don't like to help. They don't like to answer other people's questions. I try my hardest always to answer people's messages on Instagram or LinkedIn or, you know, if I can be of any help, it, it's my pleasure. Like, I have nothing to lose by helping other people. In fact, I only have to gain because not only um, do I believe in karma and that it does come back, but I believe that everyone, if they're asking, that means they became humble enough to reach out and ask, and why would it be sweat off my shoulder? Like, why not? I have nothing to lose by answering their questions and trying to help out if I can. And if I can, I'll say, sorry, I can't, but um, I have nothing to lose. Can you remember a story or a time where you helped someone out in design, like called somebody or did something that was really either out of your comfort zone or extremely hard for you? Um, well, there's a lot of things I do on a regular basis that are out of my comfort zone comfort zone even though I I love comfortable with everything um <laughs> it's 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 not like this is out of my comfort zone even though you're saying it's not like, really it's not talking yeah. to me not just you but like the interviews and the speaking I get very like not nervous but I'm like oh my gosh I don't know what I look like on camera and I watch it back and then I'm like critical and it's not so comfortable <laughs> but um I think you know just doing things outside of your comfort zone is what helps you grow. And, you know, people have asked questions and that are, or, you know, requests that are outside my comfort zone. And, you know, if I can, I push myself. And if I realize that I can, even after I push myself, then I'll just say, this is not for me and move on. So I'm very happy you're saying that also because a lot of people don't know when to say no. And people say, yes, 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 yes. And then it just gets too much. And then they become overwhelmed because they're trying to help somebody else out. Right. So I'm very happy that you're bringing that up, that it's okay to say no. It's yeah. okay to say that you can't do it. Right. And to know your limits. And to know your limits. It's, there's a fine line between pushing yourself to that point of it's so uncomfortable that you become exactly who you want to be and pushing yourself to where you reached your limits and you are on that thin line. So by knowing yourself, you can gauge what works for you and what doesn't, but there is a fine line between the two. So the motto, that, that is really bringing us into the next question because the motto of the show is, it's what you do with what you have that makes a difference. Right. I know that you relate to this. Can you share how? Mm -hmm. um, can I share how? So I guess it's what you do with what you have that makes who you are. And in life, um, you're not always given that easy free ride and you're not always given that great pump up in the morning that you're amazing and you can do whatever you put your mind to. That's not really reality for most people. Um, so to become successful or to become happy with who you are, which to me that's success. So I, I want people to know that being wealthy or successful isn't really always what real success is by waking up and being happy with who you are and what you've accomplished for yourself is actually successful. Um, that everyone's success story is going to be different and what they're given and who they become based on all of the chain of, chains of events that have happened in their life. Um, so with me, it, it, you know, it wasn't always I wasn't always the perfect student and I struggled in school and I wasn't the skinny cute girl. And I, you know, like I grew up in Detroit and I thought I had everything. And so you leave Detroit and you're like, Oh, <laughs> shop at Kmart. It's like, why not? Um, but you become, you know, with all these things, it makes you and shapes you into who you are and who you're supposed to be. And it's what you do with those things and how you apply them that makes you, that you know amazing success story now before we go is there anything that you'd like to share with us um i don't know i i think that if even one person can get inspired by watching this or um can have a reminder that not everyone who looks all perfect on the outside is perfect on the inside um if it just changes one person or helps one person then 
to me, you know, not that it was worth it, because of course it was worth it. But then I know that I did my job, I guess, as, you know, who I ultimately want to be, which is, you know, I'm here to help people and to show people it's not always perfection. Um, you just got to do you. Thank you so much, Mickey, for being here with us today. It's been so amazing sitting down with you and having this conversation. Thank you for having me. It was really nice to meet you, and thank you for reaching out to me. I'm actually really happy you did. Thank you. Okay, I'm gonna pop. Thank you so much for being. What? Well, I'm loving this. <laughs> <laughs> bloopers. <laughs> bloopers. Maybe I should make like a blooper section. Oh my gosh, can you? That would be amazing. That would be really all about. I keep like tripping on my words. You can be like, "There's another blooper." <laughs> <laughs> it's actually really good. Like I'm listening. I'm like, this is gonna be an easy interview to do because there's not that much editing that needs to really get done. Um, hello. Oh, that's a picture. Sorry. Let's do video. Okay. Which one like that? The best <laughs> advice about the criticism. criticism. Yes. Or we could talk about self doubt or ups and downs in a business. Whatever you want. Shoot it. I'll answer. <laughs> okay.